Hey y'all, Taylor here. Welcome back to the channel. This is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro and I have had it for three years now. And those three years have been absolutely amazing with this machine. I love this computer so much. It has powered my entire creative and professional life for three years. And I am just so excited to be sharing my thoughts with you on this video. So let's go ahead and just get right into it. Let's get started talking about this absolutely amazing computer. This video isn't sponsored and I'll have links to some of the products in this video in the description below. Hit that like button and subscribe. I'm gonna start off talking about one of my favorite features, which is this mini LED screen. The darks are super dark on mini LED because it has multiple dimming zones and it also is capable of HDR with a 1000 nit sustained full screen brightness and 1600 nits peak in certain pockets. This is HDR content that you're seeing on the screen here and it looks absolutely amazing. SDR is no slouch either at 500 nits of brightness. This is super bright, way more than I use. I usually cut this in half when watching YouTube or other content. Text clarity on this screen is absolutely insane. It has 254 PPI because of that 3456 by 2234 pixel resolution. It is 16 by 10, meaning that lots of text can fit on the screen at one time, which makes this honestly really ideal for software development. And having that text clarity, the ProMotion 120 Hertz screen just makes coding such a wonderful experience. Also, the keyboard is really nice to type on. The keys are a nice depth, they're a nice size, they feel nothing like the previous butterfly keyboard, and there is no touch bar. As for the spec on my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I have the M1 Max with the 32 core GPU option. I also have 32 gigs of unified memory optioned. And this machine absolutely crushes code. Here I'm running a little over 2100 Java unit test and it destroys them in a minute and nine seconds, which is just really, really fast. And probably most amazing is that it delivers all this performance while staying completely silent. And I can have it on my lap for hours at a time because it does not get uncomfortably warm at all. This MacBook is the peak of Apple design in my opinion. Just look how incredibly thin the screen is. The hinge still is buttery smooth. I haven't had any issues with it. And I really love how the exhaust vents are built into the hinge. So everything is very clean and tucked away. And the laptop in general just looks very understated. You can't tell the difference between an M1 and an M4. They all look relatively the same and they all have that very sleek industrial look. I think it looks very nice. The keyboard does get pretty gross though. Also the speaker grills, they get pretty nasty too. Those holes collect all kinds of dust and debris. And I also dropped the knife on the speakers. That's what this little divot is here on the right. After three years of constant use, the ports are starting to look a little worn down. You can see how around the edges, the paint has rubbed off just from constant plugging and replugging devices into this device over the course of three years. The bottom of the laptop has that awesome debossed MacBook Pro text and the feet are still in good condition. They just get a little dirty from time to time and need some wiping off. The screen gets pretty messy too with all kinds of fingerprints and you can see debris getting stuck between the panel and the housing there. It's gonna happen and it's just normal use with the laptop. I do wipe it off constantly with a cleaning cloth just so that those fingerprints and debris just doesn't cake on and pile up. Let's talk about gaming on the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. Like I said, this is the top spec 32 core, 32 gigabytes of unified RAM. This has a Wi-Fi 6 chip and gets a download speed of 619 and an upload of 541. And how that translates to game downloads, here I'm downloading Baldur's Gate 3 on Steam and it's getting about 82.3 megabytes per second download. The first thing I immediately love about gaming on this laptop is that HDR display. Be sure you're setting your games to HDR because it just looks beautiful. Look at this scene in the Tomb Raider benchmark. These dark darks with the HDR brights coming in. It looks very, very close to an OLED screen. 
And in terms of performance, here is how Rise of the Tomb Raider performs at 2560 by 1600. With the graphics preset set to high, you can see that it's averaging 65 frames per second. And here is the performance in Baldur's Gate 3 on that same resolution, 2560 by 1600 getting around 40 frames per second, in between 40 and 45 frames per second. And I do want to mention that even though that frame rate is pretty high, navigating around the map does get a little choppy from time to time. And I suspect this is due to the 32 gigs of unified memory, because sometimes when I restart the laptop and it refreshes that memory, and I boot up a game, then this is perfectly smooth. But other times when I've been using the laptop for other things besides gaming, it will get choppy and that's probably due to that memory buffer filling up. Overall, this is a pretty solid laptop for gaming as long as you're sticking to 1600p or 1440p. And again, this is the M1 Max 32 core, so this is the highest spec model, and you can expect to get over 30 frames per second in most titles. I think one thing that would have really made this laptop 10 out of 10 is just having a USB-A port on the side so that I didn't have to use this converter to plug in controllers or whatever else I needed. And the HDMI is HDMI 2.0. It's not 2.1. So if you're connecting to a 4K high refresh rate monitor, you're gonna be stuck with 60 Hertz. Whereas if I plug it in via USB-C, I do get 120 Hertz. Using this monitor for three years now, I have noticed that the port selection does get a little tight, especially when you have as much stuff on your desk as I do. Plug in a keyboard, a mouse, potentially a monitor, a sound system, and you've filled up the ports because you only have three Thunderbolt ports. So what I do is I use this dock to connect. It just uses up two Thunderbolt ports. I just connect it to the side and that gives me a lot more flexibility in what I can actually plug into this computer. I highly recommend you that you do invest in a dock if you are planning on using this on your desk in any sort of productivity fashion. I use this MacBook Pro to edit photos in Lightroom all the time and the SD card slot is super convenient to have. It is UHS 2 so the speeds are pretty decent. Here I'm importing about 560 raw photos and it imports them pretty quickly in about two minutes. I mean, it's not super fast, but it's decent. But editing photos on this screen is truly a joy because again, it's very color accurate. It's mini LED, so you get those rich darks and it's just a great display to edit on. One of the big reasons why I went with the M1 Max version of the MacBook Pro is that I wanted enough power to edit my large 4K H.265 files that were coming out of my Sony camera, and I'm happy to report that it still performs the same as it did the day I got it. It scrubs through 4K timelines like it's nothing, everything is buttery smooth, I can put on effects, I can layer on titles, and there is no slowdown whatsoever. And on this 11 minute and 30 second clip, it was able to render it out in four minutes in five seconds. My MacBook is equipped with one terabyte of storage and I really do fill this up all the time, especially when I'm editing photos and doing videos. This thing fills up very quickly. Luckily, the storage speeds are pretty fast. I am usually offloading stuff onto external hard drives or my NAS whenever this thing runs out of storage. And the SSD speeds are extremely quick at over 5,000 write and over 5,000 reads. So if you're transferring files locally, they are very quick. In Cinemage 2024, I'm getting a multi-core score of 789 and a single core score of 109. And in Geekbench 6, I'm getting a single core score of 2325 and a multi-core score of 12297. I do have the original 2021 battery and it has 86% health and 358 charge cycles. I do try to keep it at the 80% limit to preserve the battery as much as possible. I love MagSafe on this laptop. I use it all the time when I'm not docked up and it just gives me peace of mind that if I accidentally hit the cable, it's gonna come right out. And the magnetic hold is still pretty solid, so if I pull it directly, it still has a little bit of tug to it. The cable is nice and braided and generally looks pretty good, except it's not cat-proof, so if your cat decides it wants to gnaw on it, then it will get damaged. The power brick is good too. It has fast charging and it has this little adapter here that you can pull off and put like an extension cable in if you want, 
or you can just use the standard little prongs there. And you can also remove the cable if you need to replace it. This charging system is really awesome. I hope Apple continues to have MagSafe and this fast charging on their future laptops. And the speakers on this laptop sound absolutely amazing. They blow every other laptop speakers I've ever heard out of the water, and it's not even close. Over the course of three years, my 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max has met all my expectations, which was power my video editing process with 4K Sony H.265 footage for three years and also be an awesome coding machine. It has done both of those things with no signs of slowing down at all, so I'm definitely going to be keeping this laptop for a couple more years at least, maybe more, we'll see, but it has definitely met all my expectations. It's been a fantastic laptop. The build quality is still so solid. The screen is phenomenal. And this laptop is just a joy to use. It is hands down my favorite computer I have ever used. And that concludes my three year review of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Let me know if you're upgrading your Mac or if you're getting a Mac for the first time. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.